everybody. Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event, checking in with 11101B. This was your world finalist last year. That's Bark Bot. It's getting there. So first off, congratulations on incredible performance all the way through. There are a lot of great things uh, in this high stakes role we talk about. They're having a great performance here so far. Uh, we'll be talking about a uh, lift up O-Down, which you're really interested in hearing uh, more about for their uh, climbing, uh, but a lot of other great things to break down in this robot. Really slick uh, intake areas we go through and how they're doing their transfer as well. So I can't wait to learn more about this machine coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Alex, let's start off from the ground up. Talk to you more about your uh, drivetrain, what you chose to go with. Uh, by the way, just overall your pocketing and stuff looks really nice in this robot, so I love that so much. And we'll talk more about this awesome intake too. Okay, thank you. Let's start with the drive. So this is a pretty simple drive. It is uh, 450 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels. All Omnis, because we really like to go the drift drive. Um, it's pretty simple, six motors. It gives us a lot of pushing power. And onto the intake. Um, this intake, it's pretty simple with flexibles at the start. Uh, acetal ramp right here just to get the ring up. And then we have this area right here, which is, I'd say, the most important part of the intake. It's the transition between the flex wheels to the hooks. So basically, if we can run the intake just a bit, right there, you see how basically the rings trans or the ring transitioned from the flex wheels to the hook. That actually is mainly because of this plastic piece right here, which stops the ring. If you can just push it right here perfectly in this position and then the hooks just come and pick it up and then also that makes the intake very smooth and the goal scoring on the goal is also extremely fast as well. R break this down for me a little bit. So, you know, I think about last year, we saw a lot of teams with the flex intake and that sort of thing, but not too many this year. What made your team want to choose to have that uh, option on your robot? Uh, we really just wanted the front part of the intake, to, the pickup of the ring to be just very fast because as we know, it's in tipping point. Um, oh wait. Basically, as in spin up, uh, the front intake was like very fast with the flex wheels, and we really just wanted to replicate that same motion, and that's why we chose the flex wheels on the front. Anish, we got a breakdown on this robot here. You talked earlier, you have this uh, uh, lift up odometry pod uh, for that, so I'd love to hear yep. more about that. Definitely uh, something more unique, I think, on that front, but very simple at the same point, too. Like it accomplishes something just yeah. so simple for you. Uh, and then we'll talk about a little bit more how it integrates with your climb. Yep. So actually, we use this lift up odom for you know our programming section. So of course our skills and then our match. Um, the odometry essentially gives us an absolute um, positioning system. So as you can see on the bottom here, I uh, can lift it. We have these two odometry pods, and this time we chose to go with a Dalrin based design, and we had to kind of you know adjust the shape many times and you know create it so it fits in this small area. As you can see, we have a horizontal and vertical wheel that is banded down, right? So right now it's in driver control, so the kind of state of it is in the upwards position, right? But later on, if in the autonomous period, it actually drops down and maintain contact with the ground. So right now, as you can see, it's always maintaining contact with the ground. And essentially what this does is it allows us to have the wheels with full contact to make sure when the robot, you know, jerks, it kind of goes up and down. It's still maintaining the contact and recording its position on the ground. And one thing we have here is we actually have a climb, right? So our climb elevates the robot, but one one thing about the climb and the odometry is that they have to work together to actually get the wheels to lift off of the ground. So basically we have, you know, kind of this pulley mechanism here that kind of activates um, the odometry and kind of pulls it up. So Alex, yep. So basically this pulley, as you can see, it's like pulling up the odom. So when a robot is elevated, the odometry is up at the same time. Okay, now we have the climb. So this climb is essentially a big impulse and momentum problem, right? We're kind of going into this climb different speeds. So we really had to tune the different shapes of these sleds. This is actually kind of the fifth or sixth sled that we went through. And this shape is made perfect so that Alex can drive at you know various speeds, not too, not, not too slow, but not too fast either. He's able to go right in the speed. Um, he's able to hit it you know, in most of these matches. And we actually use Durin and polycarbonate here, you know, braced it all the way across for full reliability, made sure the robot is stable during the climbing period. And one other thing is this cutout. So to make this cutout, um, it's actually the exact same shape as that climb pole, that, you know, triangular 
climb pole. We traced that out, made the cutout, you know, used our calculations for this um, shape of the sled, and then, you know, kept it that way for the climb. Uh, for designing your robot here, are you doing any sort of 3D style modeling or anything like that? Yeah, so we actually use the software on shape to design, especially, you know, these side guards that, you know, nice pocketing. And then also we have everything kind of integrated so that it fits in this small form factor. Because as you know, in this game, there's only six inch, you know, kind of expansion. So to kind of maintain that and make sure we're in size, we're able to use, you know, software for that. Another thing is weight. We're able to see the amount of components we're using, create a bill of material that's included in a notebook. Um, you know, things like these are very, you know, important to actually keep track of our design because obviously we have it on hand, but, you know, having it on online so CAD software allows it to play, play around with it even while I'm at home. So, for example, we live, you know, kind of far apart. So, you know, CAD software really allows us to communicate which design we want to implement. Well, and Onshape in particular too, right? You can literally run that on a Chromebook as yeah. well too. So it's really great to have that cloud-based uh, uh, options for you to have as well too. Yep. Uh, let's pass over to Zane. We talked a little bit more uh, on the uh, mechanical side of the uh, geometry plots, but I'd love to hear a little about uh, some of the software behind it, uh, what you're doing from a testing standpoint. And we talked really about this Rush Auton as well too that you are uh, implementing. I'd love to hear more about that. Okay, so as we talked about, we're going with two wheels on our odometry. So uh, actually the original odometry had three wheels. We would have two vertical wheels and one horizontal wheel. But uh, this season we decided to go with only one vertical and one horizontal because um, in the calculations for the odometry, you can actually completely remove the second vertical wheel because that's what actually calculates your current heading, right? But we actually have the inertial sensor on here. So what we're able to do is just sub in what we would do originally with the two vertical tracking wheels, the distance uh, subtraction. And instead of doing that, we can just use the inertial sensor. Um, this also allows us to minimize the amount of space that the odometry is taking. As for what we actually use to do the odometry, uh, we originally ported over JAR from a JAR template from Vexcode to Pros, but we decided uh, soon after that we'd go with Lemlib because it's supported currently in Pros and there's a lot of contributors. So it would just be a better choice for us in the long run. Uh, in terms of Lemlib, we use multiple different functions. So uh, we use a move to point function. That's our main function. That basically just uh, tries to see what our heading and our distance error is and constantly tries to get to our, uh, a point using that. Then we also use the boomerang algorithm, which is called move to position inside of Lemlim. Um, that basically tries to get to a heading uh, at the same time as trying to get to the point. Uh, and we don't really use pure pursuit, but that is included in Lemlib. And looking at from uh, this rush, this rush auton that you talked about before, describe a little bit more what you're doing for your autonomous strategy. Yeah, so for rush auton, as we know, uh, the we have two stacks of rings right on the autonomous line, and that requires a lot of precision to not cross the autonomous line. So this odometry really helps with that. But basically, what we do is we immediately go for the mobile goal that's in front of the stacks of rings, and then we go for the stacks of rings, and we uh, we've actually basically. Uh, we get to the stack of rings in around two seconds from the start of Auton, and we're out of there by four seconds. So if any team tries to start getting rings at three seconds, for instance, we've already pushed rings over onto the other side. So they may intake our rings or mess up their own autonomous. Love the thought process that goes behind this well too, especially as we start to get ready for playoffs here uh, at the Minnesota Signature Bank. Can't wait to see how that continues to play out for your team. But uh, hey, congratulations on a great robot once again for this. We can't wait to see how your team continues to evolve throughout the season. So keep an eye out for this team. And thanks a lot for telling us more about uh, your robot here at the Minnesota Signature Bank. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.